Today I'm going to show you how to make a cool stylized black and white portrait. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We're also on Facebook at Flurn. We're going to do a really cool stylized black and white today. We're going to go over sharpening. We're going to add some grain. I'm going to show you how to make your subject look really cool. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so this is our image of Zach. He did a really great job and uh, basically this is straight out of the camera and there's just a couple things we want to fix right off the bat. Uh, first thing is you can see the seamless doesn't quite extend all the way to the very edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my marquee tool here and we're just going to select this area out, hit command T for transform and I'm going to click right here on the right and just drag that over. There we go. It just stretches it out to the right Command D to deselect, and that's a really easy way to extend your edges around your backdrop. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and turn it into a black and white image. I'm going to go to my adjustment layers, and I like to use the black and white adjustment filter. It's really nice. It comes loaded with all these cool presets, blue filter, darker, make him look horrible. <laughs> um, you can just play around with these, and uh, it's just a little bit fun. So you can play around with these guys, or you can start off with something you like and just say like, yeah, I like that, why not? And then start to like play around and get your own versions of these things to go as well. So um, you can start off with that, or you can just go completely custom on it. You can also add tint. I generally just don't do this, uh, not in this stage, but if you did want to kind of get across everything, um, you could do like a slight sepia tone or something like that. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that tint off for our purposes. Okay. That looks really good. So it's, it is a black and white. Um, it's still a little bit dull. I want this image to be a bit sharper and we want to add some like grain and make it a little more interesting. Let's grab a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to do just a little bit of a vignette before we get started on the rest of the image. Um, so a curves adjustment layer, we're just going to, <laughs> we're going to click here and bring it down a little bit, which makes it a little bit darker. Okay, then here on the layer mask, I hit Command I to invert it to make it black, and then we're going to make a rectangle or a uh, marquee selection right around our subject. I'm going to hit Command I right there. It's going to invert our layer mask, so then we need to invert again. This is very complicated. It it's really not that complicated. I'm just making it sound complicated because just words and Photoshop don't mix. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a nice blur. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and we're going to go to Gaussian Blur, and it's just going to give the edge of that out the edge of the vignette just a little bit of a nicer blur and I don't need to pull that down as much just want a little bit there we go and that looks pretty good now another thing you guys are probably gonna see is like you'll be able to see this banding in this image um, we're gonna take some steps to kind of alleviate that problem as well and we're gonna do that just in just a little bit okay I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and we're going to make a stamp visible layer and then we're going to use a couple sharpening techniques. The reason I wanna turn this layer off first is because if I decide to sharpen my image with this on, it's gonna sharpen those bands as well and we don't want that to happen. So let's turn this layer off, create a new layer and then hit Shift Option Command E to make a stamp visible layer. Okay, stamp visible layer, basically everything you see on a new layer. Now I'm gonna do this twice. I'm gonna do two different sharpening steps. So I'm gonna hit Command J, so I have two copies of this. Okay, our first step, let's go ahead and change this from normal down here to linear light. There we go. And I'm gonna to go to filter, other, and over here to high pass. Okay, so we've got a high pass filter, and this time what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna kind of crank it up right about to the place where it looks kind of bad. Um, right about, let's see, 20 pixels here. And I know this is like over exaggerating. It doesn't really look that good, but I'm gonna hit okay anyway, because I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick you can do that's gonna make it um, kind of just blend in a little bit better. So most of the time, what makes this not look good if you bring your high pass filter too far is the darks just make everything look weird, but the lights usually still look good. So I'm gonna just double click on this layer. I'm gonna bring up our layer style and I'm gonna hold alt or option and click here where it says underlying layer and I'm gonna go from left to the right there we go, right to about there, and hit OK. So you can see Command Z, there's the before and the after. You can see it really does make the image look quite a bit more natural. And turning this off and on, you can see it does help out, kind of like bring his features to light. Maybe change the opacity just a little bit. So a cool way where you can crank up your high pass filter, but still not make it look horrible. OK, we're going to do the same thing with this layer as well. Change this from normal down to linear light. I'm going to go to filter, 
other end to high pass. And now we are gonna use a lower radius here. All right, there we go, and hit okay. And this is just gonna be like a general sharpening on the image. So you can see there's the before, any sharpening is done, and the after. And then we're gonna bring in our vignette here. Yeah, it's still a little bit too much. Let's just go ahead and lower the opacity of that vignette just a little bit. There we go. Now, this looks great. I'm gonna take it a little bit, a couple steps further. I just want to. You totally have the choice at this stage. Um, we're gonna create another layer and then Shift Option Command E, we're gonna make a stamp visible layer again. And I wanna add a little bit of a blur to the bottom part of this image. It's gonna help us look more closely at our subject. So we've got our stamp visible layer. We're gonna go to Filter, Blur, and to Field Blur. There we go. And I really like this blur. It's included in Photoshop CC and CS6. And uh, if you guys are using an older version of Photoshop, might be time to upgrade because this is it's one of the cool cooler filters that's included in the newer versions. Okay, what basically you can do, you can click a couple points on here and then choose the amount of blur that you want on any of these points. So I can like click on that one and now I got a little blur, not as much blur. Um, let's put this blur down to zero and this blur I want to be where his head is and then this blur I want to be down here. Maybe you just choose that a little bit less. There we go. So I'm not, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. No like super blurs or anything like that. Just a little bit of blur. It's gonna help us look at our subject's face a little bit more. So we just put a zero blur on his face and then one down here with a little bit more. And let's hit okay and see what it does. There we go. So turning this off and on, you can see not the biggest change in the world, but it does take a little bit of the detail down from this area down here, which makes you look at his face. Pretty cool. All right, the next thing we're going to do is, I wanna add some noise to this, but I don't like to add noise on a full size image because it doesn't look right, because the noise tends to be really small and you lose the effect. So you wanna make sure you duplicate your layer if you have a stamp visible layer on the top, just like I do here, or you can just make another stamp visible layer, Shift Option Command E, and we're gonna right click on here and go to Duplicate Layer. We're gonna change this from New, all right, and it's gonna create a new document. So now I've got a new document and I can go ahead and size this. We're gonna to go to image, down here to image size, and we're gonna put our width at 1000 pixels. Now this might be the size you upload to the web or whatever. The reason I don't wanna change the size of my original document is sometimes you might change the size smaller and then you're gonna save over it and then you're gonna be really pissed at yourself because you now only have a document that's this big when it should, you should have the full res and you gotta go re-edit it, whatever, whatever. So if I'm resizing something like this, I always make sure to create a new document. Okay, this looks good and uh, let's create a new layer, Shift Option Command N. Shift Delete is gonna bring up our fill dialog. We're gonna hit use 50% gray. And now let's go ahead and go to Filter and Noise and then we're gonna go to Add Noise. And for this, you can use whatever you want. Uniform, Gaussian, just whatever you like. I, I kind of like uniform, looks good. Um, and we can turn on monochromatic because it's a black and white image. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now, let's just zoom in a little bit. We're gonna change this layer blend mode from normal to soft light. There we go. And you can just lower your opacity here to whatever looks good. And it's really totally up to you. In this case, I do want a little bit, so 17 looks pretty good. The other thing that's gonna do is if you do add that artificial blur, especially like what we've got going on here in Photoshop, it's just gonna kinda, of, the blur is gonna go over top of it. It's gonna make it look a lot more real. And um, with these kind of like black and whites up, I really don't mind a little bit of uh, grain on there. I think they look good. So that's pretty much it, guys. Really cool portrait and didn't take too long. Let's show you guys the before and the after. So this is after. And then this, well, let's just group all these layers. Shift to click them all, hit Command G and group them. So there's our before and our after for like a real cool stylized black and white portrait, just a couple minutes. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me. If you wanna do an image of your own and leave it in a comment down below, I'd love to see it. Thanks again, I'll Florin you later. Bye guys. Hi guys, Kat from Florin here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flearn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter, because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.